Yo, what's good everybody? This is Suheel back with Feel Good Threads and today we're talking airbrushes. Today I'm going to be going over how to troubleshoot your airbrush and get it unclogged. With that said, let's go. <laughs> What's up guys, in today's tutorial we're gonna be working with the Iwata HPCS. This is one of my favorite airbrush guns. I wanna just kinda of give you guys a little bit of know-how of your actual airbrush. So if you're brand new to this and you feel a little intimidated, this should give you a little bit of confidence before you start breaking this down. The back end here is really just to make sure you protect the needle. So what I can do is I can just take this guy off. I usually tighten it by hand and unloosen it by hand. I don't use any tools for this. And we can put this guy to the side. You can see this little nut here holds the needle. And what I can do is I can just use my hand if I ever wanna take the needle out and I can unscrew it. And now you can literally just pull this needle out, okay? Before I pull the needle out, we'll go ahead and jump onto the body and to the front side of the airbrush. Now the paint, when it goes inside here, Obviously it's gonna shoot out from the front end. So if anything in the front end here is clogged, then we gotta get this guy cleaned. I'm gonna go ahead and just unscrew it. There's two ways to unscrew it. Either you can unscrew it by hand, or Iwata gives you a little tool here where you can use the tool and you can actually use it to unscrew. Now one important thing about unscrewing and, and screwing back your nozzle cap, you never wanna do it too tight because if you do it too tight, you might actually break something when you're when you're screwing it in you just need it to be airtight so this is the nozzle cap that i just spoke to you guys about and the reason why you might have a clog is if this little hole right here is clogged with paint or something then yeah of course you're not going to be able to have any paint come out of this airbrush so we always got to make sure that this passage here is nice and clean next point here you guys can see is this small guy here and this is actually the nozzle piece so the first step that I like to do when I break down my airbrush is always opening up the whole airbrush to this point and getting this little nozzle out, all right? So let's go ahead and take this piece out. How do we do that? It's real simple. We've already taken off this little nut here that was like that, right? We just unscrewed it. The next point is if there's wet paint in there, you wanna clean out your bowl first before you pull this out. So let's go ahead and clean this out first. And what I do is I will take this airbrush cleaner and I will simply just drop airbrush cleaner inside. And I'll let it sit and let it do its work. It's, it's basically weakening the paint right now. At some point when I feel confident that the paint's gotten weak, that's when I'll actually pull one of these guys out here. This is a, a brush wire. And the reason I use that is because it has a nice strong bristles but it's not abrasive to the inside of your, your cup here, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and just start to break down the paint that's on the inside. So you can see that when I break it down, now all that paint is now liquefying. It's turning back into like regular paint instead of being all dried up. So you see that there? We're gonna go ahead and dump that out. And I'm gonna repeat this step until we get the cup to be clean. It doesn't need to be perfect, but you wanna to try to get it as clean as possible. So again, I'll repeat that same process, and we will again try to break down any paint that's like clinging onto the inside of the cup, and again, we'll dump. Now that I have the airbrush pretty much cleaned, I'm gonna go ahead and use this Q-tip to help just kinda of take out the excess paint. And what I'll do is I'll just swoosh around like this, just to get the airbrush to be almost 90% there and you guys could see there's still a little bit of paint there and that is okay what I'll do is I'll flip the q-tip here I'll add a little bit more airbrush cleaner and again I'll just go ahead and put in the, the clean side of this q-tip and now we should be pretty prepared to pull out that needle all right, so this is done. I'm gonna to toss this guy, and I'm gonna go ahead and dump. All right, guys, now I'm ready to pull this needle out. In a 360 fashion, I'll start to very gently pull out the needle. We got the needle taken out. I've got this little nozzle piece that we need to take out. It lit literally will come out 
by hand, see? And you can see in here, there's paint. So let's clean this nozzle first. This is our first point in trying to get our airbrush unclogged and usually the culprit on why it's clogged, all right? So let's go ahead and jump into that next. I'm going to get a dirty cup. So I drop the nozzle in there. We're gonna just go ahead again, same thing as we did with the, the cup of the airbrush. I'm just letting the airbrush cleaner do the work. Usually I'll let it sit here for about 30 seconds to a minute. That'll help kind of break down whatever is on the inside of the nozzle piece here. And when I start to clean it, I'll show you exactly what piece I use. These are called interdental brushes. It's an excellent tool. I get these from the 99 cent store. These are great pieces to help clean your nozzle. So I'll show you guys how to clean your nozzle with this guy. I will basically just take one of these brushes and I'll try to grab it from the inside here like this. See how it fits perfect. And what I'll do is I will grab a napkin. I'll hold this guy here and I'll basically be brushing this guy's teeth. <laughs> Just kind of swishing it back and forth in a 360 motion. And I'll be taking out paint as I go. So you guys can see how much paint came out there. That shows you right here why this nozzle can easily get clogged. What happened here is there was dried paint in there. So now I'll hold it and I'll dip it back in. And this process, I might go through and do it three or four times just to make sure the nozzle piece is completely clean on the inside. All right guys, so now here, I've got this nozzle all cleaned up. And what I like to do is I like to point it at a white light because if you can point it at a white light and look inside, I'll use a squint one eye and see if I can see a nice clean circle on the inside here. That's your determining factor that this nozzle is all cleaned up. If you still cannot see through and see a white hole through there, it might be because this front end still has paint in it. This is what I like to do to get that paint out. First off, make sure you have a nice clean needle because you don't want to continue to put paint in there, right? Now that I have a nice clean needle, I'll go in from the back and start to just poke out like this. Very, very gently, all right guys? Because if you, if you like smash it in there, what will happen is you will actually break the front end of this uh, nozzle head. And you don't want that to happen because then you'll have paint leaking from here. That's the last thing you want. Then you're gonna have to buy a new nozzle piece. If you see the excess paint coming out, then after that, again, do the same test that I did, which is just taking this and pointing it at the light just to make sure that you can see an actual hole, all right? This nozzle piece is now cleaned. We're pretty much down to just the body here, so I can literally just take my inner dental brush here and I will just poke it from the front and we'll see if there's any, any residue here. And it'll usually be in this little section here. And let's just see if there's anything there. See? So you can see that there's clearly something there. Uh, when I see that there's some kind of paint there, sometimes what I'll do is I'll take that same airbrush cleaner, I'll dip the brush here, and then I'll just kind of do the same thing. I'll brush around in a 360 motion. That'll help break down any dried paint. See how much came out. So now you're seeing how, how precise everything needs to be. I, I see a lot of that in the body here. I'll go ahead and grab like a dirty Q-tip. This end is, is still salvageable, so I'll dip it and we'll go ahead and clean the inside again to the point where you can see that there's a lot of navy blue there. We're cleaning it all out. There we go, see? So now that the, the inside cup looks pretty clean, I'll just do another quick run, just make sure there's no excess paint that's coming out. You can see there's nothing coming out. So now we've got that, that cup definitely cleaned out. Let's go ahead and put in the nozzle piece. The nozzle is very simple to put in. You just plug it here, right here on the top. But I always like to make sure that it's plugged in completely. You don't wanna have any air that's leaking from this section. And then put the nozzle cap right on top. 
screw the nozzle cap on. Now there's one of two ways you can either like hand tighten it like this, which I, I prefer to do, or you can use the tool that Iwata gives you and just to make sure it's tightened well. Do not over tighten it. You can break the nozzle cap. So just make sure that it's tight enough where you can feel that it doesn't move anymore. All right. So we're getting the point now, guys, of just putting in the back end piece of the needle. So I'll go ahead and drop the needle in next. Just checking to see if there's any more dirt. I see a little bit of dirt there. So before I completely put it in, I'll grab a Q-tip just to pull that excess dirt out. It's out. And now as I put the needle in, you don't aggressively push it in. You push it in to the point where you will see the needle come here and protrude out. Bam. I don't know if you guys could see that very, very, very small tip. And now we will use our lug nut here just to tighten and keep the position of the needle. Back end piece to protect the needle. And now guys, we've got a fully cleaned Iwata HPCS. All we gotta do is test this guy out. There's a couple of ways you guys can test this out. The, the easiest way is just dropping airbrush cleaner into the brush. But I usually just will use it here and make sure the spray pattern looks nice and clean. Feels great. So that's, that's the end of the tutorial, guys. Yo, I hope you guys appreciated this video today. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button and comment below, because I really appreciate you guys' feedback. I've got some super exciting news today. We're gonna be expanding our platforms over to Patreon and the YouTube Premium channel. So that's gonna be coming very soon. If you guys liked this video, you guys are gonna find a lot more value in this new premium channels that we're gonna be putting up. Uh, it's going to be under patreon.com slash feelgoodthreads if you're gonna be joining us on Patreon. And then the YouTube Premium channel is going to be coming very soon as well guys on both of those premium networks we're going to be doing premium giveaways we're going to be doing question and answer sessions for you guys and we'll have a lot lot more so if you guys are trying to level up please join us my name is Suhil with feel good threads and i'm out of here peace